Hey, let's take a walk down a hall of mirrors. A hall of mirrors is all about reflection. The principle of reflection says that the angle at which light first hits the mirrored surface is equal to the angle at which the light bounces off the mirrored surface. It says that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Now, so much is going on in here that you may be able to catch the camera in one of the reflections. This is because we can't control the different angles at which the light hits the mirrors. So you can see lots of different things. That is the principle around reflection and what makes the Hall of Mirrors so much fun. Well, we've been talking about reflection, and reflection can be either specular or diffuse. But you know what? Reflection is reflection. The surface is what produces the reflection. But once the light bounces off of that surface, then it's a matter of looking at the wavelength that relates to what we actually see. Now up here is just a sketch. Oh my goodness, can I not draw a accurate model, an accurate sketch or model of the electromagnetic spectrum. But this right here is a sketch of the entire electromagnetic spectrum, just to give you an idea of what it is that we're looking at. Now this is where we call light. This is where light exists. Now, on the far left end, we have radio waves. Now, the wavelength of radio waves is absolutely huge. Wavelengths of radio waves vary with frequency. And that's why on the radio, we have all sorts of different frequencies. And when you vary the frequency, although the speed doesn't change if the wave is transmitting through air, then, but the wavelength does. And it's the, the frequency relative or adjusting the wavelength that gives us the ability to make distinctions between different broadcast stations. So, so jiggling faster will decrease the wavelength. But radio waves are huge, long, long, long waves. And we did an example in the previous lesson that, that showed that these wavelengths can be hundreds of feet long. So these waves are just enormous. Now we'll come back to that in just a second. I, I'm making a big point with that. And then as we continue to go on, the frequency changes and the wavelengths start to go into a region that we call microwaves. And if we keep going on, we get into the infrared portion of the EM spectrum. And then there's this very small band, this very small band that we call visible light. So if we see it, if, and, and when we see, we're talking about what our eyeballs pick up. Our eyeballs are only sensitive to frequencies of light that are in the visible spectrum. And the visible spectrum is incredibly small compared to the entire electromagnetic spectrum. But on the other side of the visible spectrum comes the ultraviolet. Now the ultraviolet with these uh, decreasing frequencies, excuse me, increasing frequencies, decreasing wavelengths, the energy is in these waves is just being transmitted more and more. Remember that a wave is a transmission of energy. And so if you're standing on a beach and a wave hits you, you feel that. You can close your eyes and feel the water. You're feeling that, that energy transmit to you. So as the frequency increases, you get more energy transmissions more frequently. And so we perceive that as more energy. Well, the ultraviolet is starting to get to a point where the energy is getting pretty serious. Lots of energy. This is where we get sunburned from. And you can literally feel the, the rays. It's stopped by your skin, but that, all that energy is being captured by your skin. And that's why your skin feels warm, because of the ultraviolet energy, the frequency of light hitting you in this region of the spectrum is literally burning your skin. It's no different than if you add heat to meat when you cook it, a hamburger. You're adding heat and it cooks it. So as we continue to increase the frequency on the EM spectrum, we get to x-rays. Now x-rays have an energy level, deliver enough energy that it literally penetrates your skin and treats it as virtually invisible, but then gets trapped by the bones or reflected by the bones. Okay, and then we end up with gamma, incredible energy associated with this. This 
Gamma rays, they mow right through us. In fact, they're very damaging to our cellular structure. So these are the pieces of the electromagnetic spectrum. Huge, huge wavelengths on one end, very, very, very small wavelengths on the other. And here's the energy. The energy in radio waves, very, very weak. There's not, I mean, if you stood in a, in a, on a beach and just let a wave hit you and then, you know, 300 feet out there, another wave is coming in and then it hits you, you can perceive that as, okay, that's not bad. I can handle that type of energy. All right, so radio waves are very big, very big. And these radio waves can be received can be received by very, very large antennas. If radio waves hit this board, although this board is very bumpy to the visible spectrum, it is smooth as glass to a radio wave because the wavelengths are so big. Now, if you look at radio antennas, the big ones, like for astronomical telescope type satellites, the big wire mesh ones, to a radio wave, those wire meshes are smooth as glass because the wavelength of light is so big. But to visible light spectrum, if we were to throw visible light at a radio antenna, those big ones used for astronomy, it would just mow right on through, mow right on through all the holes and gaps. So it's the wavelength of light that gives us insight into understanding what creates a mirrored surface and what creates a specular surface or a smooth surface. So we've got smooth surfaces which create specular reflections and rough surfaces which create diffuse reflections. So diffuse reflections are considered bumpy. To the visible spectrum, this board is very bumpy. To the radio portion of the spectrum, this board is smooth as glass. So to distinguish between specular and diffuse reflections, we do have to pay attention not only to the surface, but the surface depends on what kind of energy, or in this case, what kind of light hits it. And when we talk about light, we're talking about the visible spectrum. Although there is ultraviolet light and infrared light, when we talk about light, you and me, we relate it to the, the energy that's in the visible spectrum. Well, I have a very interesting demonstration back at the wave pool to kind of make a little bit more sense of this from a visual perspective, a more visual perspective. All right, to the wave pool.